ಪೂರ್ಣಮದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂ ವಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷೀಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನ ಪುನ ಈಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮ ವದ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಪೋ ಜಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವರ್ಷ ನಂಬರ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಭೂತಗ್ರಾಮ ಸೈವಾ ಭೂತ್ವಾ ಪ್ರಲೀಯತೆ ರಾತ್ರಿಗಮಿ ವಸಾಪ್ತ ಪ್ರಭವತ್ಯ ರಾಗಮ ಐ ರಿಪಿ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಭೂತಗ್ರಾಮ ಸೈವಾ ಭೂತ್ವಾ ಭೂತ್ವಾ ಪ್ರಲೀಯತೆ ರಾತ್ರಿಗಮಿ ವಸಾಪಾರ್ಥ ಪ್ರಭವತ್ಯ ರಾಗಮ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಭೂತಗ್ರಾಮ ಮಲ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸ ಏವ ಅಯಂ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಥೇಮ್ ಭೂತ್ವಾ ಭೂತ್ವಾ ಇಮೈನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ರಿಲೀಯತೆ ಇಟ್ ಜೋಲ್ ರಾತ್ರಿಗಮೆ ಇಟ್ ದ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ನೈಟ್ ಅವಸ ಅಂಡರ್ ಕಂಪಲ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಪಾರ್ಥ ಹೊಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಥಾ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಪ್ರಭವತಿ ರಾಚೇಜ್ ಅಹರಾಗಮೆ ಇಟ್ ದ ಕಮೆನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಮಿಕ್ ಡೇ ನಾವು ಸಿ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ Shri Krishna says to Arjun, this multitude of beings, beings born again and again, is dissolved under compulsion of the nature, is the coming of the cosmic night, and rises again is the commencement of cosmic day. See the, again its meaning. this multitude of beings born again and again under compulsion from nature merged at the commencement of brahma's night and rises again at the start of his day the topic about abhyakta started in previous words when lord shri krishna started describe uh, describing about the brahma's day and night as in previous course we discussed that our waking state and our deep sleep state in both states consciousness is same whatever creation we have created in our waking state now see there are two types creation one creation is created by the brahma ji the creator of universe so everything is created by the brahma the earth the water 
one year. And any small thing you take, you will find that the ultimate creator is the Brahma. Its name is Brahma. So everything is created by Brahma. You can say that created by the God. But in God's creation, we create our own creation. Like this earth is created by Brahma, not by anyone. The sun, the moon, the ocean, fire, water, everything is creation of Brahma. Then we create our own creation. This earth is mine. This land is mine. This gold belongs to me. This family, husband, wife, sister. There are so many, so many relations. So we have so many relations, positions, emotions. They are created by not Brahmaji. This is our creation. They created this. They created this land is mine. This is my property. So I-ness and my-ness is because of us, not because of the Brahmaji. So in creation of the Brahmaji, we create another creation. That is my own personal creation. My father, my son, my property, my body. So I ness and my ness is our creation. This creation is when we are in waking state. Suppose I am waking right now, and I hope you are also in waking state. But when we are in deep sleep, the, our creation, which was created by us in waking state, it totally disappears. In my deep sleep, there is no my son, no my father, no my property, no my weakness, no my strength, even no my body. Totally, my creation disappears. And when I wake up again, and creation comes, creation comes. Same method is with Brahmaji. When a Brahmaji in waking state, there is creation. So, this time, you can say that this is the day for the Brahmaji because we are experiencing everything. We are experiencing the everything. It means Brahmaji day is running out. Bhuta Gramaha. Now, so in creation of the Brahmaji, I have my own creation. You have your own creation. Everyone has its own creation on personal Christi, on personal creation. So everyone we have our own creation. If someone dies, creation disappears. Which creation? Which was created by that particular person? Here Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, Arjun, now think, multitude of beings, when I am in deep sleep, my creation disappears. You are in deep sleep, your creation will disappear. Other person is deep sleep, his or her creation will disappear. But now he is talking about collectively. 
Bhutagrama. Bhutagrama means the collective multitude beings. The collective consciousness, collective jiva, you can say that is the Brahmadi. Bhutagrama Sayivaya. When Brahmaji sleeps, when Brahmaji sleeps, then what happens? The Srishti of the Brahmaji, the creation of the Brahmaji disappears. Now let me explain it. Praliyate. Praliyate does not mean destroy, destroy. The creation is there. But it is not available to experience. Now collectively, the creation disappears. And this disappearance is not also permanent. When its day starts, Aharagami, Ahara means the day. When Brahmaji wakes up, he starts thinking about the creation. Like, suppose you are in deep sleep, you forget everything. You were tired. You got very good sleep, deep sleep. You forget everything. And when you wake up, some, slowly, slowly, you remember everything. Remember everything. This, 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 this. Same Brahmaji also wake up. And he starts thinking about the creation. So Vedas says, Yathadhata Purvam Akalpayat. Brahma is not creating new creation. Creation was, but it was just disappeared, not destroyed. See the difference between destruction and disappearance. Disappearance means the object, the thing is there, but it is not visible. Destruction means totally disappear. Destruction. So here, Sri Krishna says, Arjun, Bhuta Grama Sayevayam. When Brahmaji sleeps, the Srishti, the creation of the Brahmaji, disappears. Ratra Agami Vasa Partha. When he wakes up and creation becomes. Now see, I would like to share one thought. There are so many religions in the world. They believe that there is no rebirth. Only we have one birth. And when we die, we will not get another under birth. And we have to wait last day. Then last day will come and God will give judgment about you. The day of judgment. The day will come and God will take decision. Sri Krishna does not agree with that idea. He says no. Any day will not come, you will liberate without realizing your God. For liberation, only one path is, and that is realization of the God. There is no other way. So this thought, we are waiting after death, the last day will come, 
and God will come and God will take decision about us. Sri Krishna says, Brahma is snips. You are also in seed form. We are also sleeping with the Brahma ji because you are part of the Brahma ji. We are a part of the Brahma ji. So in Brahma ji sleeps, the entire creation is sleep, including us. We are also sleeping. There is no gross body, but subtle body is there. So there is no any method. Here Sri Krishna says, when they begin of the Brahmaji, they begin and started thinking about the creation. Before the prale, destruction, suppose one person was very, very religious. He was supposed to go in heaven. Other person was supposed to go in hell. Another third one was expected to go human body. When Brahma they start new creation, new thinking. Yatha Tata Purvam Akalpai. So Brahma the creates just it was before. If someone was ready to go heaven, that person will start his journey from that point. If someone was go to hell because of his or her bad actions, that person will go to Yatha, whatever it was. Prabhavat Yaharagami. And it happens forcefully. We don't have choice because Brahma is sleeping. We are part of the Brahmaji. If he does not know anything, we are part of the Brahmaji. We also would not know anything. Now, next one. Paratasma tu bhavonyo abhyato vyakta sanatanaha yasa sarave subhute su nasa suna vinashyati. I repeat. Paratasma tu bhavo anyo abhyakto vyakta sanatanah yasu sarveshu hoteshu nasat suna vinashyati. See the first word meaning. Paraha much higher tasma than this to even bhava existence. Anya eight another Avyakta unmanifest Avyakta unmanifest Sanatana eternal Yaha we sa that Saravesu Bhuteshu Saravesu Bhuteshu Natsatu with the destruction of all beings na not Vinashati benches. Now see the meaning. Or beyond even this unmanifest, there is yet another unmanifest existence, that supreme divine person who does not perish even though all beings perishes. See the meaning one more time. It's beyond this manifest, there is yet another unmanifested eternal existence which does not perish even though all beings perishes. Before we enter in this mantra, we have to understand one thing and that is the concept of the vyakta and object. What is the vyakta? Sri Krishna used this word so many times. 
weird and object. So first I will make you clear what is weird and what is object. So Vyakta means in Sanskrit, which you can experience. Vyakta. You can experience, you can realize, you can feel. Avyakta means something is there, some existence is there, but it is beyond our approach. Now see, anything is, so what is proof? How can we say that this is something proof it needed? This is here. How do you know? This is the red color. How do you know? You would say, this is the red. I saw it through my eye. So we have five sources for proof anything. Ear. Ear. There is any sound. What the proof? You will say, yes, I hear. I can hear. I am hearing, so my ears are proof, there is sound. This is hot or cold, how do you know? You will say, I touched it, I felt it through my skin. So skin is another proof for Hot, cold, so hard. Then the red color, white color, our eyes are proof. This is salt, sweet, where the proof, our tongue is proof. This is bad smell, good smell. How do you know? Our nose is a proof. So we have five sense organs. They work. They are proof for anything. For blind men, there is no any color because that person does not have the proof of the color. So we have only five proofs for things. We can prove, we can prove that there's the chair, the sound, taste, touch, smell. And one inner faculty, we call it mind. We think. Now see, anything, anything which is not can be experienced through the six organs, we cannot accept. There is no proof and we need proof. Either you show it then I can accept. So whatever we have accepted, it is because of the six faculties. These all things are of Vyakt. You can say this is Vyakt. Chair is Vyakt, visible. Even small atom, very small, 
atom it is not visible through the naked eye but it is not a object you can see it through the device so this is not invisible is not object now i will give you an example you take a seed a banyan tree seeds a corn seeds any kind of seeds suppose i take a banyan tree seed very small in size and in that seed there is unlimited fruits leaves colors taste but they are not visible you can break it but you will not find anything take its extra nothing will come out there is a green there is a color and un- unlimited fruits leaves but they are in seed you can say this is the object everything is there there is a color green color there is fruits there is a wood everything is there but nothing is appear if you put in the soil then everything will come out everything is there but nothing is visible abhyakt so abhyakt means some at distance is there but our proofs our means for knowledge is not so capable they cannot grasp it but existence is there lord sri krishna says here bhava par tasma tu bhavo bhava means existence abhav means non existence so something is there but our mediums our means are not so capable so we cannot use them as means to know that but existence is there this existence here sri krishna is saying like consciousness par tasmat tu bhavo anya here sri krishna has described two types of vyakt a vyakt has two categories one category is a vyakt the brahma sleep in other word i can say that the maya the nature the maya ignorance this also object and manifested so still sri krishna was saying about the abhyakt and that abhyakt was brahmas leave ignorance but here par tasma tu bhavo anyo abhyakto abhyakta sanatana another abhyakt is the consciousness of the god now see our ears cannot 
near the God. Our skin cannot touch the God. Tongue cannot taste. Eye cannot see. Nose cannot small. And even mind cannot think. Because God is not an idea. God is our existence. So when it have existence is ignorance. And another bhav is consciousness. Two types of death. Paratasma tu bhavonyo. Sri Krishna says, Arjun, but, two means but, Tasmat Bhava, that Bhava, Abhyakt, Abhyakt in shape of the Brahma, the sleep, ignorance, it had been described. But now another Abhyakt, Abhyaktu Abhyakta Sanatana, another Abhyakt, we eat, but is not visible, and that is sanatana eternal. Always. It is object. No matter which in which age you are living, you may be in Satyu. You may be in the Treta, Dwapar, Kaliju. Every time that God was invisible. Abhyak, but it was sanatana, it will be, it is, sanatana means eternal. Can you experience your absence? Can you say that I am not? No. No one can say that I am not. You can say that I am not rich. I'm not poor, I'm not healthy, I'm not wealthy, you can say anything. But no one can say that I'm not. I'm not. The only question is, who are you? Abhyakta Sanatana, Sri Krishna says, Arjun, that Abhyakta, another Abhyakta, it is a superior. And Sri Krishna indicating here, Arjun, try to experience that object. You cannot see it, you cannot feel it, you cannot touch it, but you can understand it. You can realize it. Because you have lots of faith in your sense organs. This is your weakness. Sri Krishna says, Arjun, I am saying you, try to understand. Yasa Sarabesu Bhutesu. This object, this reality, this consciousness, it everywhere, 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 in everywhere, it is in human beings, it is in gods, it is in demons, animals, birds, trees, yeah, and if you remember, in the same chapter, Sri Krishna said, Adhyagya. Varchun, I am the Adhyagya. And that time I described you, Adhyagya means the God which is residing in you. God is residing in you, in your body. In form of the Sakshi, Drashta, witness. That consciousness does not do anything, just witness. So everywhere, 
if you have vision, if you have faith in scripture, if we have faith in masters, it is everywhere. If you are watching a tree, your eyes will tell you this is a tree, but your understanding will say, yes, this is not only tree, this is a tree with the God. If you would see anybody, your eyes will say that, see, this is the animal. But your understanding will say, yes, this is only animal, but not only animal, animal with the consciousness, with the God. God is also there. So everywhere, no matter it is inert or conscious, everywhere God is available if you can apply your understanding. Then it is everywhere. If you don't have understanding about that reality, God is nowhere. Yasa Saravesh Bhuteshu. Everywhere. Everywhere you can realize, you can experience, you can feel. That is why in Yoga Vasist, there is a very good message which was given Vasistha Rishi to Sri Ram. Vasistha said, O Ram, Ena Kena Prakarena, Yasikasya Videhina, Santosam Janedram. Oram, anyhow, if you can give satisfaction to anyone, no matter if they are animals, birds, trees, human beings, they are the worship of the God. If you can give some satisfaction, some happiness to anyone, if you put some water in the tree, God would be happy. He asked Saravesh of Uteshu, Sri Krishna says, Arjun, that consciousness, that power, that existence is everywhere. And the question can be asked if, if that consciousness is residing in my body, in her body, his body, this person, that person, suppose that person dies, then what happens? So that reality, Lord Sri Krishna said, that reality does not die. Like here, in the presence of electricity, so many dev devices are working. Electricity is here. So our light, our pain, computer, everything is working. Because of the light, if some device when it start work, stop working. Our bulb may be huge. So what happens to the electricity? Nothing will happen to electricity. Change the world. Electricity is there. So if body dies, nothing happens to the consciousness. Now, next one. Abjecto Akshar Ityukta Stamahu Paramam Gatim Yam Prapyan Anivartante Tadhama Paramam Mama. I repeat Abjecto Akshar Ityukta Stamahu Paramam Gatim Yam Prapyan Anivartante Tadhama Paramam Mama. 
the the word meaning avyakt the unmanifest aksharithi as the indestructible yukta has been spoken of some that ahu kal paramam gatim the supreme goal yam which prapya attaining na not nivartante they return dham abod are stayed paramam supreme mama mai see the translation the same unmanifest which has been spoken of as the indestructible is also called the supreme goal that again is my supreme abode attaining which they return not to this mortal world see the uh, one more time if translation this unmanifest is spoken of as the indestructible is said to be the supreme goal that is my supreme abode on attaining which there is no return so shri krishna described about avyakt and i hope you got it avyakt means something is there but it is not available to us some existence is there but it is beyond our sense of them. so now sri krishna adding something abhyakto akshar ityukta fortune whatever abhyakt is indirectly he is talking about the consciousness about the brahman he is giving the name as abhyakt <laughs> god is but he is not visible it is beyond our sense organs same abhyakta you can say akshara akshara this chapter is akshara brahma so akshara means which is not going to decay akshara means always so abhyakta and akshara both are same and third one he is adding here is saying paramam gatim the last destination paramam absolute last last destination last work now you can think we have been doing so many things but it there are something to has to be done work is not over yet we have been doing fully fully with energy what work is not over yet there are so many things to has to be done it means we are in middle our destination is somewhere else we have done a study it work is remain we have done job and money made houses did everything but something is it has to be done so what is that something has left so what is that because of that we are not satisfied so our last destination is somewhere else and we are trying here and there we are looking for our last destination paramam gatim your last destination you can take an example you are roaming here and there 
we are busy with your business. There are so many ships you are roaming. This country, that country, this place, that hotel. But when you reach your house, you feel, oh my God, I have come. I'm so tired. So for some time, you can say that your house is your last destination. So we are roaming here and there, doing such and that. But still we are not satisfied because we are not our last destination. Paramam Gatim Sri Krishna is saying, your last destination is the God. Absolute reality. Your last destination is your you. You are the your last destination. And we are running so far away from ourselves. We are running so fast. We are trying to go far away from ourselves. Paramam Gati. Sri Krishna says, when you will reach yourself, when you will reach the God, the consciousness which is not visible, then you can feel the satisfaction. No need to come back. I am satisfied. I am contemplated. No need to take body. No need to do this and that. I am fully contented. Tadhama Paramamam Sri Krishna says, This is my thumb, my abode. Now, here we have to understand something. We have a notion that God is in heaven, God has its own abode. It may be like earth, like we are living in the earth. We are living in our city, our house, our planet. So same, almost, it may be more beautiful, a more advanced something may be there, but God has a very beautiful planet. Heaven, Baikun. And God lives there. There are so many facilities protected. So God is different. God is living like us. We are living in our house. God is living his house. Sri Krishna says no. The God and its word are not two. Sadhama Paramamama. The God and its word. You can say states. God is not residing anywhere. God is residing everywhere. Not a particular place. God is residing everywhere. In me, you, here, there, everywhere. But not any particular place. God is sitting. On seventh cloud. No, God is not sitting everywhere. God is everywhere. God is not sitting in a particular place. Saddham means the state of godliness. Now, next one. Purusha sapara partha bhaktya labhyastonanyaha yasyantastani bhutani yena sarva midam tatam. I repeat. Purusha sapara partha bhaktya labhyastonanyaha yasyantastani bhutani ena sarva midam tatam. See the word meaning. Purusha means soul. Sa, the paraha supreme, part son of pratha kunti. Bhaktya devotion labhya is attainable. To indeed, Ananya through exclusive Yasyantastani 
regarding in whom Bhutani are beings and by whom Sarvam are the idam tatam parvedit. Now see the translation. Sri Krishna says, Arjun, that eternal, eternal, unmanifest Supreme Purusha, in whom all beings abide and by whom all this is pervaded, is attainable only through exclusive devotion. See, one more time its translation. That Supreme Purusha, O Par, in whom all beings based and by whom all this is pervaded, is attainable only by the exclusive devotion. Before he was giving two names, Akshar Abhyat. Now he is saying Purusha, residing everywhere. Pur means the city. Sha is residing. He is residing everywhere. Yasan Tastani Bhutani Varchun. Two concepts are being given here. One is everything is in God's stomach. Inside in God. Another concept is God is inside everything. Everything is in God. So God is, it is God's Virat Rup, the biggest form. When it is said that God is neighbor, it is God's smallest form. Yasyam Tastani Bhutani. Virtue, that reality that God is everywhere in every being and every being is in God. Yet, this reality is not visible. It is not available for everyone. The only if someone wants, if someone wants to know that, if someone wants to test that reality, that person must have exclusive devotion. Devotion is the vision to see the God. Like a mother sees son, not through her eyes. His son sees through attachment. So if someone wants to see the God, the only way is devotion. If devotion develops inside, God is everywhere. Everything is God. If there is no devotion, then no one can prove. Like you cannot prove any color to blind person. So divine devotion is divine vision for divinity. Watching by that devotion, one can see that reality. Now, last one. Yatra kale tona vrittim a vrittim chayva yoginaha prayata yanti tam kalam bhakshami bhartar shabha. I repeat. Yatra kale tona vrittim a vrittim chayva yoginaha prayata yanti tam kalam bhakshami bhartar shabha. First, see its word meaning. Yatra kale at which time to to and anabritim, the state of non return, abritim, the state from which they are have to return, cha and ev alone, yogina, the yogi, prayata, having departed, yanti attain, tam kalam, that time, bhakshami, I shall describe parthasava, based of parthas. Either translation. Overture, I shall now tell you 
the time part, departing when yogis do not return, and also the time part, departing when they do return. See the translation again. Now, I shall advise you, O best of Bharatas, the time when the yogi leaves their bodies never to return and also part when they depart to return. Now Sri Krishna is starting the next new point. Obviously this point is related to the final depart. There are two parts. Sri Krishna says when someone departs from this world, someone leaves this body, there are two paths. One path will lead to the state, that state is non returnable. You don't have return ticket. Another path will lead you, that path will take return. Return naval state. Yatra Kali. Kali here doesn't call, doesn't have time. I will explain on next lecture this topic. Actually, this topic is very mysterious. So I will take next topic, next time. So Sri Krishna says, Swarjun, there are two paths. One path is going to non return naval. Another path will lead you to return naval state. Both I will, I shall describe you. So next time I will take this topic. Om Puranamadaha Puranamidam Puranat Puranamudachati Puranasya Puranamadaya Puranameva Vasishati Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Sankaracharyam Keshavam Vadarayanam Sutra Bhashikrita Vande Bhagavanta Pona Pona Isharu Guru Ratmiti Murti Veda Vivagine Vyoma Vadavyapta Dehaya Sena Murtae Namaha Om Santi 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 Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narutamam Devim Saraswati Vyasham Tatojayamudira Eta Om Santi Santi Santi